Hello, welcome to Dustin and Anthony's amazing book review. Today, we'll be discussing Lev Grossman's book, The Magicians, by Lev Grossman. We'll start with a brief summary of the book. The book focuses in on Quentin Coldwater. He gifted an intelligent man at the top of his class with his future well paved. He has intentions of studying at the University of Princeton and is heading off to an interview. Quentin is infatuated with a book series called Fillory and Further. These books closely resemble the Chronicles of Narnia and have a profound impact on his life. Fillory is a magical land that fascinates Quentin, who one day hopes to stumble through a cupboard and find it. On a day in cold, ripping November, Quentin drops the piece of paper in the wind. Chasing it into a bush, he discovers a portal to a new world. In the warm summer heat, he wonders, is this Fillory? No. This is Breakbills University, a college for magic. For the next five years at Breakbills University, Quentin learns difficult and intricate inc incantations and charms, which prove difficult even for the most gifted. In his class of only 20, he meets a shy small girl named Alice. The two slowly develop a friendship, and maybe a little more. The two of them join a small club called the Physical Kids which is a group of students who deal particularly with physical magic. This gifted group becomes a dysfunctional family to Quentin. During his time at Breakwells, he also encounters a creature known as the Beast. This otherworldly master introduces a darker side to the magical realm. After graduation, the group discovers Fillory. The magical land proves to be a reality. There, they once again confront the beast, and a major battle ensues. Alice, whom Quentin has fallen in love with, loses her life, destroying the monster. After defeating the beast, Quentin perfects his magic for a while, and Fillory eventually returns to the real world, where he resumes a normal life. Ten years pass. Quentin, still searching for happiness, abandons his life to return to Fillory with his old friends. Together, they become kings and queens of Fillory, finally finding true happiness. The major theme of the novel is happiness. Quentin is obsessed with it and believes it is unattainable state and his depressing life. Throughout the book, Fillory represents happiness. Quentin is always looking for happiness, but it's always out of reach, just like Fillory. Upon coming across Breakbills, when he thinks it is Fillory, he thinks happiness is once again within reach, but once again, happiness proves to be something that is always out of grasp for Quentin. We'll start with talking about author's style and how it enhances the meaning of the book. We'll begin with imagery. Ah. On page 7 of the book, Lev Grossman describes Fillory as... He describes it as a world of magical twilight, a landscape as black and white as stark as a printed page, the prickly stubble fields and rolling hills crisscrossed by old stone walls. This represents Quentin's idea of happiness, that it was a real, actual, achievable thing. It came when you called. I don't know. It never really left you in the first place. Another instance of imagery in the book is on page 241. After Quentin had cheated on Alice, someone broke into their apartment. But while Quentin tried to cast another ward to seal the apartment from normal people, it just seemed so unimportant, and the words were just too heavy to get out of his mouth, like there were stone blocks in his stomach that he would have to physically cough up and regurgitate. This reflects Quentin's state of unhappiness at this moment. The diction of the novel is also very important. The author stylistically uses a very intellectual language, but also throws in many swear words and personalized tones. This represents the state of mind of Quentin. He may be very intellectual and smart and gifted, but he's still a teenager. An example of this is on page 41, where Quentin was experimenting with the idea of being happy dipping an uncertain toe into these intoxicatingly carbonated waters. This intelligent diction reflects his state of mind as being an intelligent young man. The sentence is then followed with, It was just too f funny, which reflects his teenager's state of mind. 
So, what do all these literary elements mean? That's it! What the author meant is that life is a search for happiness, and we have to find where we belong. A key event in this book that reflects this message is when, after Alice dies, Quentin stays in Fillory on a quest for happiness. He does manage to perfect his magical powers after he'd been gone from Earth for a little over two years, but he still has not found happiness. Even back on Earth, the search for happiness continued. When his friends finally come to rescue him, the quote on page 401 says, It had been a long time since he'd experienced any emotion at all, other than sadness and shame and numbness. So long that for a moment he didn't understand what was happening inside of him. In spite of himself, he felt sensation coming back to him, and he thought a part that he thought was dead forever. It hurt, but at the same time, he wanted more of it. And thus, this sends his search for happiness. He finally finds it with his friends as they return to Fillory. Is this novel a classic? Yes, we believe it is. Due to the high amount of literary content and the strong motifs, this book is a classic. Another reason why this book should be a classic is because its main theme is happiness. There are not many novels out there with the name of theme being happiness. We also compared this book to other literary classics such as Frankenstein, which is also, roughly, a lifelong search for happiness. However, while in Frankenstein, the main character dies unhappy, in this book, the main character lives happily. We also compared this book to Hamlet because, like the main character, Hamlet is trying to find a new life and go away to school. So, how would this book be used in future English courses? We talked about its relevance to social themes, and we analyzed them to be happiness and also the theme of college. Now, where would this book stand in the future literary repertoire? Well, we didn't think it would be as great as classic such as 1984, One Flew Over the Cougar's Nest, but still better than, than the modern pop book such as The Hunger Games. So, in conclusion, this book is a classic. It uses an intellectual tone that is more personalized, and it has the theme of happiness. Hello, little boy in the bush. And that concludes today's episode. Thank you for joining us. It's been a fantastic episode of Tawny and Dustin's Super Duper Amazing Book Review. See you later! Uh, finally, we're done. Thank God that's over. Do you want to go play some tennis or something? Yeah, sure, let's go. I got it. Hey, Anthony, come help me. I don't see it. Where is it? Welcome to Break Bills University, College for Magicians. Like the book? Dude, yeah, like the magicians. We're That's gonna learn cool. magic. That's awesome. And so I crashed on the top when I'm lying in bed to get it all up. What's in my head? Actually, magic isn't quite that easy. Good morning, students. Sit down. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Um, now, the study of magic, it's no science, it's not even an art, it's not a religion. It's our craft, ladies and gentlemen. When we do magic, we don't wish, we don't pray. We rely on our will, our knowledge, and our skill to succeed. The study of magic is not as easy as it may seem. Now, we're studying the powers of nature, the mysteries of nature, and it's not that easy. We have to calculate the phase of the moon. We have to calculate our own intentions and purposes, precise circumstances. And all of these are factors in a spell. You need to tweak it, conjugate it almost like a verb to its subject. 
so that every time you cast a spell, it's made for the situation that you cast it. We make change in the world. Specific change. Now today, we're going to begin good old Dutch incantation. I'm sure you're all familiar. All you're gonna do, take the pebble in front of you and make it move. Simple enough, once you're done, you may leave. Begin. Yeah, I don't know. 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 Why isn't this working? Don't you know? It takes five minutes of precise finger movement. If you mess up just one, the whole spell is broken. Oh, man. This isn't as fun as I thought it would be. No. Right you are, student Ellison. Everyone's gone. Everyone's already finished. Yeah, I know. Even the teacher's gone. Yes! That's not even fair! She was in our class. Yeah, she got the pebble to move right away. She's just like Alice from the book. Hey, are you Alice? One of us is Quinn. So that means... He meets a shy small girl named Alice. The two slowly develop a friendship, and maybe a little more. I got this one. There's only one way to solve this. Rock, paper, scissors. Rock, paper, scissors. I'm sensing a little magic right here. I'll show you how it's done. Didn't work. I don't know why. Oh Jesus! Oh God! I'm on fire! <laughs> Aren't you gonna help me? No, it's funny. God! Ah! Oh my gosh, guys! Look at it. It's on fire. <laughs> AP Lit anymore. We go to Breakfield's College. We learn magic. We don't need to be, to be obsessed with some stupid book we had read back in our senior year. Yeah, but but Fillory, it's like, when, don't you want to go Fillory too? Symbol of happiness? Come on, it'd be great. Oh God. Lev Grossman obviously made the book too relatable to the reader. And now Anthony's been brainwashed by the book. And he wants to go to some fantasy, fantasy land called Fillory. Come on, let's go Fillory. It'll be great. Lev Grossman, what have you done? You're taking Anthony from me, please! No! 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 <laughs> 
That's all I wanted. It's just a go fillery. Why did it have to come to this? Why? Lev Grossman, I swear, I will get back at you someday. But dude, fillery's right over here. Oh my god, no way! Yeah, it's right over here, see? Woo! We're going to fillery! Let's go to Fillory! Me too! I'm the beast, bitch. Oh, shit. it's the beast. That's right, I'm the beast. I was once a kid, and I came to Fillory. And it changed me. I got addicted to the magic. And now I'm a beast. Yeah, stop it. Jesus. Shoot. Oh my God. No, Dustin. Dustin, no. Dustin, you can't die me. No. Dustin, come on, you just you just killed the beast. You saved Philly, no, you can't die. No, no. no. Dude, dude, I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. Okay. No, no, no. Hey, we did it. We saved the world. Cool, we just saved Philly. Wanna play some tennis? Yeah. I wish I was dead, but you... Can I play? Sure. Yeah. Today's edition. Hello, welcome to today. Welcome to today's edition. Can you say that five times fast? Hello, welcome to today's edition of our awesome show. We're really bad. At this. this is really hard to enunciate. Welcome to today's edition. You guys are stalking my room because we're buying it for a AP Life project. Oh. Okay. All right. Is it close up? Yeah. Your hand is in the frame. What Take 13. <laughs> Whoops. Incendio. <laughs> 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 Yeah, me. No, I'll hold like my hand left and right. Can you do that? Oh, I got this. Damn it. Who's listening to you? Come, 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 come. Kobe, come. <laughs> so I'm gonna talk, and then when they stop talking, then you blow on it. Don't touch me, sir! <laughs> what do I have to do? Talk about your character. I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> we just said. Uh, what the f I'm gonna learn. So what? I was a little. What am I supposed to say? All right. All right. Just whatever. Go. Oh, it's not going. Yeah. This is awkward. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's happening. Oh shit! 
<laughs> oh shit. I'm okay, okay, I can't I can't do that. I can't do that. <laughs> Now I'm a beast. <laughs> <laughs>